Hello lovely patrons, welcome back to another Patreon exclusive video. Today I thought I would do a recipe video, I haven't done a vintage recipe video for a while and I just really felt like making a vintage recipe for dinner tonight so I thought I would share it with you guys. It is this recipe here, it is the Hunt's Classic Meatloaf or one of their recipes. Hunt's was a brand, uh, I think it still is, in the US that made tomato sauces. We don't have these kinds of tomato sauces here in, in I was gonna say Australia, here in the UK uh, that are kind of pre-prepared with spices and everything. So I created my own, so I'm not using the original Hunt's tomato sauce, but hopefully something kind of similar to it. So yeah, let's make some meatloaf. Without further ado, let's get into it. <laughs> what have you got? Okay, so the ingredients that I need are an onion, I need some breadcrumbs, I didn't have any bread or breadcrumbs so I've just blitzed up some rice crackers, I'm sure it will do exactly the same thing. I've got some beef free mints here, the packet is really tiny and I didn't realise that so I'm going to have to like quarter the recipe but it's just me eating it so I won't have a giant meatloaf to try and finish in the next few days before I go to Australia so that's good. But yes, it's going to be a really tiny meatloaf. <laughs> Some tomato sauce, I made this by blitzing up just half a can of tin tomatoes, a fresh clove of garlic, some chili, a green chili pepper, some mixed herbs and some salt and pepper so that hopefully I ended up with something similar. I know that Hunt's tomato sauce is seasoned and on the front of the can in the advertisement there are pictures of chili peppers so that sounded about right to me. I hope I'm not far off for those of you who do know what's in Hunt's tomato sauce. I'm also for the sauce on the meatloaf going to need some mustard, some vinegar and some brown sugar. So I'm going to get to dicing this onion. I'm just going to very finely dice it so we don't have too many chunky bits in the meatloaf. Nobody wants a big piece of onion when they're chowing down. Probably only need half the onion, so I'll leave the rest of that. Have myself an unnecessarily large bowl. I'm just going to put the onions in there. It just says to mix all of the ingredients together. So that's pretty easy. I'm only going to need like half of this. If that even, we like that. Obviously, if you're not vegan like me, you can use normal mints. It doesn't really make any difference. It's not a vegan recipe, so I'm just substituting uh, vegan options. And what did it say? I think it's one, it's a half a can of Hunt's tomato sauce, so I probably want like half of this. The rest of it I will use for the sauce. Hmm, it's not too bad. It is kind of spicy though. All right, let's mix this baby together. I did put salt and pepper in the tomato sauce mixture, but I think it would have been in that anyway. So I'm gonna add salt and pepper as per the recipe to the actual meatloaf. You don't want it to not have enough salt and pepper. And before I forget, I'm gonna turn the oven on to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit. Okay, this really is not working with a spoon. The mince is too hard probably from being in the fridge, so I'm gonna get stuck in with my hands. This is definitely much better. It says to form it into a meatloaf, so I'm gonna turn it into the world's most tiny meatloaf. So this is a pretty straightforward recipe. Like it's got very little ingredients in it. So I'm interested to see how it's gonna taste. It's relying very heavily on the seasoning in the Hunt's tomato sauce, I think. So luckily I added some tasty things to that. Look, it's so little. I might make it a bit more squat. It's my little, my little guy in the world's smallest meatloaf. <laughs> I don't have any paper towel uh, and I need to grease this. So I'm just gonna use a tiny bit of oil. You can of course use vegan butter, but it's all kind of the same thing in the end, isn't it? And uh, I'm just gonna use my hand to just lather this up a little bit, make sure it doesn't stick. Whack this puppy on there. Boink. 
Okay, so now to make the sauce, I'm definitely gonna have way too much, but I'm just gonna use the original recipe. So it's half a can of Hunt's tomato sauce or my tomato sauce mixture. And then it's just two tablespoons of everything else. So two tablespoons of mustard. Actually, I'm gonna start with the brown sugar so that I don't get my spoon dirty. One. I need a little bit extra. It wasn't really full tablespoons. Uh, mustard. I feel like that's a lot. Two tablespoons. Wow. What? It'd be spicy. And two tablespoons of vinegar. Okay, so I need to wait for the oven to heat up properly. Apparently I have to put this in first and then after a little while I'd baste with this. So I think it's gonna go in for about, it says an hour and a half. It's probably not gonna need that long because it's so tiny. So I'm gonna say 45 minutes. So I'll leave it 15 minutes in the oven without the basting on it and then I will baste it and keep basting it throughout the next 45 minutes and see how it's looking and whether I think it's cooked. Let's see what happens. This is supposed to have one cup of water in it as well. So whoops, I'm just putting that in now. <laughs> okay, so it is time to put this baby in the oven for 15 minutes and then start pasting. Okay, it's time to baste. Let's see how this goes. I just realized I forgot to put the egg into the mixture, so hopefully it's not too dry. I think this will help a lot, like the basting process, but yes, you are supposed to put a beaten egg in the recipe. I would have used aquafaba had I remembered, but it was very moist and was holding together quite well, so fingers crossed it's not super dry. First basting done. I'm putting it on for another 15 minutes and then I'll baste again. Let's see how it's going now and try another basting. Hopefully it's not too dry. It's looking like this. It's definitely gonna need consistent basting for sure. I'm starting to get hungry guys. It actually looks really good. I have to think about what to have with it. Maybe some, I've got broccoli and cauliflower in the freezer or I could make a little kale salad to go on the side. Probably the broccoli and cauliflower because that's like a classic 1950s dinner, isn't it? Like meat and veg. Mm. I ended up cooking the meatloaf for about an hour and 10 minutes all up. It's looking fine to me. I did, instead of just basting with the fresh baste, go in and take some of the thickening juices and put it over the top and it came out more like a glaze. So I'm very pleased that I did that. And I've plated up just some steamed broccoli and cauliflower and a couple of potatoes that I just microwaved. So they ended up kind of boiled or roasted, cut them in half and just stuck some vegan mayonnaise inside. So let's plate up and see how this tastes. It's actually really good, even without the egg, and it held together perfectly well, so I'm sure the texture would have been a little bit different with the egg, but it's really yummy, and the, the glaze on the top is really good. Mmm. It is legitimately my dinner time, so I'm going to chow down on this, enjoy the rest of it. I would highly recommend this recipe. I will leave it down in the description below. It is just an advert from the 1950s, so you saw it in this video, but I will leave all the instructions and the information down in the description in case you want to try it. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more vintage recipe videos, let me know and I will make them. See you in the Patreon feed, the Discord chat, and the next video. Bye.